Seas, distinguished guests, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be with you today because this is a field that interests me and I feel is critical for India's growth. Electronics is really like, a, like the nervous system of a nation. And as a nation evolves, that nervous system must evolve with it, just, it, just as it evolved with uh, the species as they evolve from the earlier species, barely 250-odd nerve, nerve junctions, to the humans with maybe 15 billion-odd uh, nerve junctions. We need a similar network in our country if India is to progress, if India is to move ahead, if we are to keep up with the world. We missed one bus with the Industrial Revolution. A sudden boost in muscle power, and we were not able to catch up for 300 years. Maybe we didn't jump on the second bus on time, and that is the electronic revolution or computer revolution. And now we might have to run behind that bus, catch up to it, and jump onto it. I think we are capable of doing this. You have You have mentioned, sir, about the first wife and the second wife. But we should not be looking at our industries as wives, especially as we only have one wife now anyway. <laughs> More like brothers and sisters and teaching each other to fish. Electronics, although it is an industry on its own. It really must be used to supplement all other industry. And that is where you will come in, in updating all our older industry, making it more productive, make it more competitive, and really bringing it up to world standards. Today, electronics has permeated just about every field. Industry, education, of course, defense, information handling. There's no place where, there, where you do not have electronics. India is still lagging far behind. I was just told that on average you have to dial 12 times before you can get through. So there are these problems and we have to get rid of these problems. You have mentioned, sir, that about the certain problems with government policy, with the taxation and duty policies. Uh, we have been looking at these for the past couple of years. We came out with a completely new package uh, for the electronics industry some months ago. And I think you will like the package that we will present you in the next parliament session. But I would like to point out that many of the concessions that we gave, many of the reduction in controls have not been passed on to the consumers in the way that they should have. The production the industry has not been as dynamic as it should have. And we will, well, we'll give you another chance. If it doesn't work, we'll have to think of 
prodding a little harder, not by force, but by some other means. I feel, for example, that protection should be of only one sort, preferably only fiscal protection and not licensed protection, which means that you will have to be more efficient. You will have to compete. You have mentioned import duties, but import duties go together with import protection. And there again, we have to preferably have only one. To get electronics really moving in India, we have to go down to the other end of the chain. We are mostly talking about manufacturing and selling. We have to go to the other end and produce enough people who will be able to uh, deal with the equipment that you're about to produce, which means a turnaround in our education system. We need many more institutes, such as uh, the ITIs, but oriented and run in a much more professional manner, oriented towards uh, more modern fields of technology. We need to really develop uh, a mentality in our people of uh, using modern methods. And somewhere along the line in defining equality and defining equal rights, we have gone a little off the track and we have promoted only mediocrity. We have to look at this and once again bring excellence out, lift excellence up, and not try to pull excellence down to make everybody equal and mediocre. You, maybe a month from now, you will find that we have tried within our resource constraints to do something for telecommunications. We are already looking at the licensing policies. Much, we have not had time to look at it yet. We've, the last couple of months have been extremely rushed. I think in the coming months we will take a deep look at it and it does need a thorough overhaul. And really what it needs is much more by the small scale and by the public sector. We have got a very large gap in between. We would like to fill this gap. We will be seeing in the coming months that many of the procedural problems that you have raised are cleared. But of course, as we develop new policies, as we move ahead, we will have to really feel our way and get proper feedback from you because every step we take will raise new problems and we would like to get quick feedback so we can take quick action to correct those problems. You will find this government, I think, moving faster than you're moving. <laughs> and the problem will not be with government constraints or government restrictions or time taken by government, but can you keep up with what we are doing? Thank you. Within the framework of their open door policy has begun with a massive program of modernization and transfer of technology. And in this context, where new technology is involved, import duty on all raw material machines do not attract such high duty as 150% as exists at present. Lastly, so far as the electronic industry is concerned, I would set for the electronic industry to be achieved by 1990. We are indeed fortunate in having today the entire cross-section of the electronic industry, which includes planners, government officials, and industry representatives who will have to take up the challenge of achieving this ambitious target.
Just by the way AIMO has adopted the precision of the electronics industry and assigned me precisely five minutes, I will try to live up to that expectation. Mr. Prime Minister, your own attendance here today is yet another manifestation of the importance your government places on. And we Americans, at any rate, like to believe that the United States is the largest single reservoir of state-of-the-art research and development and applications in electronics technology. Thus, given India's quest to develop its well-trained engineers and technicians, as well as its burgeoning electronics industry, and given our ability to supply a broad range of products and technology, we must now focus our attention on how we can jointly provide the best framework for future technology exchanges in this area. The Indo-Dutch relations and the transfer of technology will help me to keep it brief because it's all so simple. We in the Netherlands have always believed that freedom of the seas, because that's what originally got our independence a long time ago, freedom of the seas, freedom of international trade and sound competition will provide mankind with the most effective instruments for economic growth. Two things may stand in the way, monopolistic positions or organizational and political constructions that hamper the entrepreneurial spirit of man. Yes, we believe this is all fairly simple. What I feel does rather distinguish us is the fact that this old belief in competition has continued unabated over the last 40 years. The world has grown so much larger since World War II, but you will know that the Dutch voice in Europe has all along been warning against protectionism. only through a rapid modernization program. And it has been made abundantly clear that every one of us here has a part to play. Performance is what you have demanded. Performance is what the electronics industry will give you, sir. Under your pragmatic leadership, a new era has begun. We at the AIMO are extremely grateful to you for having taken a little time off from your busy schedule to be in our midst. It lends substance to an already meaningful exercise which we at AIMO have ventured upon. It also gives us an opportunity to say loudly and clearly to all those who want to give us their technology that India will not allow itself to become a junkyard of obsolete technologies. We want the very best or not at all. On that, there shall be no compromise. In whatever field of industry we choose to take, the latest technology is available. If it is available not just from one or two suppliers or countries, but from various suppliers in several countries. And we are in a position to choose exactly what we want. <laughs>